In the rest of the chapter, we're going to look at resources. A non-renewable resource is one that does not tend to replenish itself, and that's what we're going to focus on in this section. Some global examples of non-renewable resources are gasoline, coal, and natural gas. So these are things that once we use them up, there's no way to recover them or to reconstitute them. You can also think of non-renewable resources on a more personal level. So for an individual, lottery winnings or an inheritance might be thought of as non-renewable resources. Once they're used up, they're going to be gone. And we're going to look in this section at how long the supply of a resource will last. So first, let's talk about static reserve. In the simplest case, the same amount of the resource is used up every year. So this is the simplest one to calculate. The static reserve is how long the supply S of a resource will last at a particular constant annual rate of use U. And that's given by S divided by U years. So I could write that as and the number of years that the resource will last is equal to the supply S divided by the constant annual rate of use U. So this kind of calculation can tell us that at the current rate of consumption U.S. coal reserves will last 250 years or that the U.S. strategic reserve of gasoline will last 60 days. And this might not be quite accurate, but it's a good estimate. Uh, we know that coal is still being extracted and also that the rate of use is probably not actually a constant, so this might not be quite accurate. Also, if our gasoline supplies were suddenly cut off and we had to go to the strategic reserve, then there'd probably be a lot of controls on who could get gasoline and how much they could get so that we could try and stretch that to more than 60 days. So let's look at an example of a static reserve. The National Helium Reserve, also known as the Federal Helium Reserve, is a strategic reserve of the United States holding about 1 billion cubic meters of helium gas. The reserve was established in 1925 as a strategic supply of gas for airships. So that's no longer quite relevant. In the 1950s, it became import an important source of coolant during the space race and the Cold War. And that's more what we use helium for now is as a coolant. In the year 2000, the US was using helium at a rate of 84 million cubic meters per year. So at this rate, how long would the National Helium Reserve last? So my formula is going to be N is equal to S divided by U. S is my supply, and I have, we have 1 billion cubic meters of helium in the National Reserve. So it's going to be 1 billion. That's a pretty big number. U is the rate of use. And in 2000, we're using helium at a rate of 84 million cubic meters per year. So U is going to be 84 million. So then my, uh, my helium will last from this reserve. That will be 1 billion divided by 84 million. And if I put that into my calculator, that's going to be 11.9 years, so almost 12 years worth of helium in the reserve. In fact, by 1995, the reserve was $1.4 billion in debt, and this prompted Congress to phase out the reserve in 1996. And the resulting Helium Privatization Act of 1996 directed the United States Department of the Interior to start liquidating the reserve by 2005. By 2007, the federal government was reported as auctioning off the Amarillo Helium Plant, 
and the National Helium Reserve itself was reported as slowly being drawn down and sold to private industry. And this is even though helium supplies continue to dwindle and helium prices have risen dramatically. So it's a valuable resource, but it was obviously also very in debt, so you have to make some choice there. Next, we're going to look at exponential reserve. Most resources aren't used up at a constant rate, but at a rate which increases every year. So, for example, projections for use of electric power often assume that use will increase by a fixed percentage each year, kind of like inflation. So to calculate an exponential reserve, we have to take that into account. So that's how long the supply S will last at an initial rate of use U that is increasing by a proportion R each year. And then this is the formula for that. You might not recognize this uh, LN here, but LN stands for the natural logarithm. You don't have to worry about what it does. Most scientific calculators have a button for this function, so hopefully you can type that into your calculator. The formula for the exponential reserve is derived from the savings formula on page 781 of your book. You don't have to worry about how the formula is obtained, but just know that it represents a resource that's use is increasing by a certain percent each year. And we can think of this situation as making regular withdrawals with some interest from a fixed supply of the non-renewable resource. So let's take a look at an example of exponential reserve. Coal accounts for 30% of U.S. energy use, including 50% of electricity. Recoverable reserves of U.S. coal could last about 250 years at the current rate of use. So the static reserve is 250 years. How long would the supply last if the rate of use increases 1% per year, which is about the rate of growth of the U.S. population? So they tell us here that the static reserve is 250 years. So n equals s divided by u is equal to 250 years. That's useful because I have an s divided by u in my formula for exponential reserve. And we also have, we need to know r. r is the rate of increase of use, and that's 1%. And if I put that in decimal form, that's going to be 0 0.01. So I've got everything I need to put into my formula. So on the top, I'm going to have the natural log of 1 plus s divided by u is 250 times r is 0 0.01. And on the bottom, I'm going to have the natural log of 1 plus r is 0 0.01. So I can put that all into my calculator. And if I round to the nearest year, that's going to last 126 years. So that's about half the static reserve. The exponential reserve is a lot lower. There are also a lot of other factors when we're looking at reserves of a non-renewable resource. Static reserve and exponential reserve are the two simplest models, but things can be a little more complicated. Estimates of the supplies of a resource may underestimate or possibly overestimate how much of the resource is available. Previously unknown sources might be discovered or technology might be improved to extract previously unavailable supplies. Also, as supplies dwindle, supply and demand comes into play so that prices on the resource rise and the rate of use might slow down. So things you should know for this section, you should be able to know the meanings of the static reserve and exponential reserve of a non-renewable resource, and apply the formulas to find the static or exponential reserve given the supply and rate of use of a resource.